Okay, great. Well, it is 1030. Um, and so um, we are going to call uh, the academic committee meeting to order. Um, do we know, is Dr. Stratos joining us? Um, I could give her a call. I thought she was. Okay. Well, if, if not, then um, uh, Nakia. Um, um, or Are someone she, will be able to to guide us through the the going over of the ARs, right? Trisha, she just emailed me and said she'll be in in two minutes. Okay, wonderful. Thanks, Molly. All, All right. right. Well, then let's go ahead and get started by uh, standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United States, United States of America, America and to the, the Republic, Republic which for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under, God, under God, indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and justice for all. For all. Okay, thank you. The uh, next on the agenda is, is the approval of the agenda. Mm -hmm. I, I make move, a motion. I move we approve the agenda. And I'll second. Thank you, Kathy and Mel. <laughs> Any discussion? Okay, given none, all in favor say aye. 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 Excellent, thank you. I am Kathy Mel. So, Ms. Robin, do we have any uh, public comment? No, ma'am. Okay, so moving on then. Um, I did ask that there be a uh, chairman's report during this time. So, if I may, um, first, I would like to express my appreciation to the team, the team being everyone present here, Dr. Stratos, everyone involved in the creation of the student code of conduct. Um, you worked very diligently on it, and um, Ms. McKenzie, I know that you, uh, you know, ab above and beyond, you know, your teaching duties and everyone else, um, just thank you very much for it. Uh, I'd also like to thank my fellow board members who contributed feedback on the document. Mm -hmm. I know that I was not the only one that read this document, and I know that based on your feedback, I could tell we all were prepared uh, for the meeting when we were discussing the document. So I want to thank you, uh, fellow board members, for that. Second, I'd like to clarify that the student code of conduct is separate from the district's administrative regulations. The code of conduct is a separate standalone document. However, certain ARs will be available to accompany the code of conduct because they support the code of conduct. It is an additional reference for those administrators or teachers or anyone that is reviewing the code of conduct to be able to say, oh, I understand how these work together. Um, however, at the last board meeting, there was a motion that was made to ensure that one specific administrative regulation was part of the document. Uh, and that was SS 39, and that was made through a motion by the board and passed. So that is why the committee will be reviewing specifically SS 39 next Tuesday. Um, Dr. Stratos, would you say that that was what I've said was is, is accurate? Mrs. Friedrichs, 100% accurate, ma'am. And we have even completed the detailed review of SS39 as a result of the board meeting that has been completed already as well, ma'am. Okay, but I just wanted to make sure that it was stated that these are, that they are separate documents. There is a student code of conduct, but how it is very important that administrative regulations be used as a reference uh, to support that code of conduct, okay? Um, Thank you. So, and lastly, I just want to make everyone aware, I know Molly sent out an email, but this meeting is not being broadcast by the county channel. The link is open to the public. Therefore, Molly is going to be controlling the mute button. If everyone will be muted, except for those she has unmuted. So if you mute yourself, she's going to have to unmute you, okay? 
How many times did I say mute in that sentence? <laughs> <laughs> Woo, mute, unmute. It has become the new buzzword. So I just want to make everybody aware of that. Um, we might have to use the chat room a little bit more. So if you accidentally mute yourself or if my dog starts barking again and I have to mute myself, um, you know, I can send an, a, a message to Molly to please unmute me. Okay. Understood. All right. So, understood. Thank you. Okay. All right. So uh, the purpose for today is um, to continue looking at some of the administrative regulations, those that really have um, an influence or, uh, or can be used as supporting documents for the code of conduct. This is nothing new for the academic committee. We review administrative regulations all the time. Um, so we just know that the code of conduct uh, needs to be a document available to our administrators when school starts. So we wanna make sure that the ARs are aligned with it uh, to support it. Last time we met, we looked at SS3, SS16, SS19. There are several more that we have to look at um, and we'll just keep working our way through it today. So Ma, uh, Robin, are you going to share your screen or is Dr. Stratos? I'll share my screen. Okay, so if so. we're going in uh, numerical order, I think the next one is SS25. Um, uh, is that, yes. Um, yes, yes. Amenable to everybody to look at that one? Yes. Let me get it pulled up. Okay. Can you okay. all see I, it? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. and the, um, the process by which we looked at the other ones um, earlier this week, I thought worked very well. So uh, Dr. Stratus, you were pointing out the, what, the differences, the changes. So can we continue with that process? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. So we're at this point, we are reviewing administrative reg, SS25, drug and alcohol use by students. And first, I do want to say thank you again, Mrs. Fridrich, for that um, statement you, you postured and to the team. They, they've been working rather hard. On this specific AR, the first item of review, you will note is Roman numeral number one, the introduction. It has been added that the Beaufort County School District is committed to to providing a drug and alcohol-free learning environment and workplace. Drug and alcohol abuse in the school, workplace, or in connection with school-sponsored activities on or off school grounds threat threatens the health and safety of our students and adversely affects the educational mission of Beaufort County School District. That is a new introduction to the entire doc document. Oh. So, Doc, I don't want to interrupt you right yeah, away, but you, you, you said use, and I noticed that was abuse, and I think you were right, use. Use, uh, and, and that's the, let me back up, sir, and I do apologize. Drug and alcohol abuse. Now, should it be abuse or use? It should be use. Yes. Yes, it should be use, because what one... Yeah, yeah we're not concerned. What happens abuse before is the above other. and beyond, right. right? Yes, sir. Thank you. In Roman numeral two, we identified a pur purpose and what we added in there was unbolding the formatting of the administrative regulation established. And that was basically the only change created in, the, uh, in that area. If we notice that the Roman numerals got realigned subject to the uh, introduction being added. So if we go down to Roman numeral number four. First correction is a grammat grammatical. Then the addition of, and I'll read the sentence, all principals, assistant principals, or principals designees shall cooperate fully with law enforcement agencies and will report to them all information that would be considered pertinent or beneficial in their efforts to, to stop the sale. This is in relation to the sale of any controlled substance or alcohol or tobacco on a school campus. Excuse me, Dr. Stratos. Um, Robin, yes, can you make that a little bit bigger? Thank you very much. Uh, that might be too big, yeah. Okay, thank you. The next item, Roman numeral five, 
Once again, we've added in the principal's designee. And if we go to the third line of that paragraph, the correction of student code of conduct, and that has been a consistent change within all the administrative regulations. Then the addition, a student found to have committed a drug or alcohol offense shall be referred to a drug and alcohol intervention program. That's aligned with the efforts of our district to try to put in support systems first before we go into just punitive practice. Are we good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. So Dr. Stratus, if we were to look at the matrix alongside of this, and this was an infraction, and I don't have it memorized, but I'm not sure which level infraction this would be, you would see that and in, in, in the, the columns to the right, that one of the interventions or one of the would be a drug and alcohol intervention program? The referral to that should be in the document. I do have the document in front of me. This about yeah. Outside uh, agency. Yes, it'll be outside agency. Um, I know Dr. Campbell is online. I'm just trying to make the connection. I agree how with the, you. How the AR supports the code of conduct. Yes, right. I'm trying. I'm trying to get up to a level two for confirmation first, and I do apologize. It's okay. level three, Doctor Straddles. Okay. Level three. So it's yeah. it's five seven five drug usage, which is on page one sixty nine of the document. It outlines the code, and in the first offense, it lists that um, referral to outside agency. We didn't want to um, limit ourselves with that, but we wanted to recognize that it could be an outside agency and that agency could go beyond, but that is but that is listed as the first occurrence. My, okay, my numbering is off, Doctor, and I apologize, Dr. Campbell, because my numbering on my document was printed prior to a board DACA yes. upload, so I am off on these right. pages. I apologize, but yes. Yes. Thank you. I just wanted to explicitly make that connection between how the AR is supporting yeah. what that separate code of conduct yeah. document is. Yeah. So if I could just share with the Friedrich and board members and, and you're leading the path, what we're trying to do is, yes, add more interventions, but also ensure that we have that alignment so that we don't compromise the school district or the administrators of practice. Yes. Right. Okay. The, thank you. Yes, ma'am. On the final page of this AR is just a two, two, basically two items. One is a formatting on the top of moving legal, legal references over, and then the citations of policy on the bottom. And you'll see that that's a constant that we have been doing with the ARs as, as we've been reviewing them, is updating the information and source. Excellent. Okay. Okay. The next AR, if we pull up, would be Administrative Reg IS-33, Adult Community Education. And you may be wondering, well, why? Well, there have been times that in lieu to either alternative placement or an expulsion, and I may ask Doc, Dr. Campbell or Mrs. Swinton to speak a little to, to this because they have handled some of the hearings um, where this option has been postured to um, families. Dr. Campbell? Yes, ma'am. So we've had situations where <clears throat> um, students were um, referred to the alternative placement um, in lieu of expulsion. And a number of these students are overage students that we felt if they're in an alternative setting again, the dropout would increase. And so instead of expelling them, um, and having that on their record, it would not allow them to participate in adult education. So we worked with our adult education with Dr. Morrell to set up a scenario where they could still, they would not participate, um, they would participate in um, adult education, um, not having the expulsion as um, a hindrance to continue their education. And we've had some some success. I mean, there were, I think Kiki, I'm sorry, Ms. Swinton, you can help me on that. At least three families that they actually finished um, adult education and they're moving on with their lives when 
if they were expelled, they wouldn't have that opportunity to do that. Okay. That's correct, Dr. Campbell. Okay. So if I, so if so I could build, our, build our goal okay. was trying to keep that um, lifeline there for continued education. And that was an opportunity. It's not often that we do it, but in those unique situations, I want the administrative reg to support us on that so that kids have the opportunity to finish and they're you know, a couple of credits away from graduation rather than being expelled, being on the streets and getting into you know, additional trouble and that puts them at a disadvantage. So we were trying to get them to finish. <laughs> okay. So to build on that, Mrs. Fridrich, um, one of the things, should our school district follow the path of having a virtual program that will also be one of the alternatives to provide families rather than an expulsion or adult education, but having the opportunity to complete for graduation purposes um, in lieu of expulsion to be in virtual context as well. So I do want to share that. I did put, do an announcement to our division this morning. We do have a hearing officer um, under the practice of um, student resource coordinator where they're not just gonna be do, working as a hearing officer, part of their responsibility will be MTSS behavior, part of their responsibility will be the alignment and continual review of our manual, as a reference I'd like to use the language, the manual uh, for student code of conduct and articles of it, um, administrative regulations. So we have a continual process of updating. And I've, I had an extensive uh, meeting with our new student resource coordinator, Meredith Sturmack, this morning, and I did push out information. So I wanted to just give you an update in that, at that practice. On the adult community education, the first obviously change is the data, date at the top. As we go to Roman numeral number four, we, it was just a correction of language of titleship. The largest, most significant change would be Roman numeral number five. Code of student conduct violations in lieu of expulsion, a student may be referred to adult education as an alternate disciplinary action for violation of the Beaufort County School District Administrative Regulation SS18 Code of, Stu Code of Student Conduct. The following modification is the date of review of revisement page two, once again, you'll note the update of policies. Okay. Yes, okay. Yeah. You're making it way too beautiful Friday, thank you. <laughs> I'm trying, I, I did not see Wendy signed in. I believe we're working on this because on the next one. Administrative regulation IS 58. Is that the next one up? Which one? Uh, Which one? Yeah, 58 is foreign exchange students. Okay. Yeah. I do not have any regulatory changes of the language. This was more for practice, but I'm just perusing one more time. Um, we were updating the practice in here. And I believe that uh, Wendy wanted, wanted us to get this updated. So if that would be the will of the board. I'm sorry, would you ask that again? So what are you, uh, I know no. Wendy, you know, is unavailable right now. She may join okay. us soon, um, okay. but so you want to put this off till she joins us? Um, if, if so, please, sure. so, all right. I would like to have her to have, be part of this. Sure. Because the next one is um, large. <laughs> okay. I believe the next administrative reg would be regulation 60, not, am I correct, Robin? Yes. Um, Dr. Stratus, though, could you, yes, there's an SS39, which we're going to do on Tuesday, but what is OS39? Did I see that in there? Did I just misread um, the... It's the, a technology, it's OS39, the AUP technology, most recent version is what um, it's I don't in there. Have a hard, yeah, I do not have a hard copy of that. I, let me see if I can pull that up. I do apologize. Okay. Well, and um, we can go on to 60 if you're prepared okay. for 60. I just I don't want to skip over 38, uh, 39. Yeah. 
because it 39 does. 39 is for Mark Chohan and Rob Confair um, if they get on to help discuss that one. Okay. Because it does have misuse of technology, which would fall under the student code of conduct. Mm -hmm. And I have pulled it up. All I have to do is print it. But it. Which do you want SS39 or OS39? Which one? I would prefer SS39. We're doing, we're doing that one on, I thought. On Tuesday. SS, yeah, we're doing okay. that one on Tuesday. Just Tuesday. Okay. All right, so we can go to IS60. Okay. okay. And if Mark signs in and, and Mrs. Cartledge, because they worked extensively on these other two, I would like to have their feedback in case questions do come to the table. Okay. So if you, so one of the biggest items you can note is the full paragraph on the purpose. Mm -hmm. It is the goal of Beaufort County School District for all students to make adequate academic progress each year and master skills needed to align with the profile of the South Carolina graduate. To realize this goal, students who are at risk of academic failure and who are not successfully progressing towards grade promotion and graduation must be identified and provided additional assistance at the regular school setting through a multi-tiered system of support using data-driven problem solving and research-based research instructional practices. The BCSD is committed to providing a safe and orderly learning environment in each school. With the expectation a student behavior management plan be developed and implemented systematically to encourage students to be successful and contributing members, I, I think it should be plural, of the school community. In BCSD, an alternative school, which again, the school needs to be removed, that should have said program, I do apologize, Alternative program setting is an option offered for those instances in which an education setting. Uh, no, you, yeah, might, I, I you missed it. You missed I, did. I, I do apologize. There was a fly walking on me. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's something that flies. Leave me alone. I'm not looking yeah. up. All right. In the BCSD, an alternative program setting is an option offered for those instances in which a student's behavior management or academic performance needs cannot be met in a regular education setting. The alternative school, the alternative programs will follow the guidelines and criteria for alternative program operations as outlined by the School Board of Education and the South Carolina statute governing school and program operations. And the reason I'm trying to do the clarity, we do not have an alternative school. Right. We house alternative programs. Right Choices does not have its own school operation number. So that clarity has to be expressed here. Okay. So I will have those corrections made. Roman numeral two. We note that the, uh, we started with the correction of programs. So alternative programs purpose, and then the next language would be alternative programs are provided as an option. As we lead down to Roman numeral three, the correction of program again. A correction to the Roman numerals to, the, to uh, numbering is provided. A grammatical per correction for programs. And the reason we're using plural as you notice, we, as we just reviewed adult, the adult education, um, some schools may house their own situation and I may want to keep my own children. Um, and if I'm not successful, then I'm gonna, we're going to go ahead and look forward to you going into um, another placement. So again, having different options for tiered approach to students. In this paragraph, the last line, the specific procedures for assignment to right choices and the Promising Students Program are described in this administrative regulation. Dr. Campbell, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to read page two. 
<laughs> That's the option of choice. I think she has to be unmuted. There we go. Yeah. And thank you, Molly. And then Dr. Oh, Campbell, you, you could hand it off to someone else when you want to share. We'll do a think pair share. <laughs> so an alternative program for behavior, right? Choices program, RCP, will be located at one or more schools or locations to be determined by the superintendent. The right choice choices program will serve students placed through the district committee. Do we want to say the alternative? Or just district committee? Well, just the language that we utilize in SS39. Okay is the hearing right. right so i think we need to have be consistent at practice and i do apologize because that correction was as of yesterday right so would we be in agreement to say here rather than district committee i'm hearing officers slash um committee because there are times where you would have a um another hearing and bring other people in does that right. make sense it may be that appeal process as well. Yeah, yes, it either appeal process or some very highly profiled situations that um, it may be more than just one person at the table. And we made that concession, Dr. Campbell and SS39. Okay, so we'll make that correction with the district committee. Okay, are you good with, are we, do we agree? Yeah, I'm fine yeah. with that. Yeah. I just want, what language oh, specifically? I, no, no, <laughs> yeah. I did have a question what the district committee was, because when I read this before, um, so what is it going to say now? Give me on where it's saying it would be a holistic, it could be either a hearing officer slash a hearing committee. Subject to the situation, it could be an alternative ed placement where the hearing okay. officer is there, or okay. I, have a, I have an IEP. There's an advocate involved, there's legal involved. So mm -hmm. we would have more than just that hearing officer so that we could protect the district at the table. Right, okay. So, so it makes more sense than a district committee because I, I didn't see where that was defined anywhere what this district committee is. Right. And actually in SS39, we have provided a definition um, yesterday. Okay, all right. Okay. Um, for the Buford County School District student discipline process. Principals may request placement at Right Choices program through the, and then we're going to change that. If a student exhibit, oh, oh, sorry. If a student uh, exhibits a pattern of unacceptable behavior in the school, presenting a significant disruption to the educational environment in a, in the regular educational setting, and or any violations of the Beaufort County School District student code of conduct, providing transfer as a consequence of the student's behavior. Students who may be considered for entry into the program may include students who are expelled, long-term suspended, chronically truant, disengaged learners, or repeatedly in violation of the Beaufort County School District Code of Conduct, resulting in multiple out-of-school suspensions. Students who have not responded to the other less intrusive interventions and students presenting a clear, th oh, sorry, a clear threat to the safety of the other students or personnel. Students charged with a felony or a crime allegedly endangering the safety of others in which it is reason reasonably foreseeable the educational environment in the regular educational setting will be significantly disruptive if the charged student remains and students who have committed an assault, threat, or harassment on school personnel may be assigned to Right Choices program. So if we could just pause and note how we added in the expelled option. Yes, I was gonna ask about that. So that child would, for whatever the duration of the expulsion is, well, it's a year, they may, they may be assigned to right choices in lieu of being expelled to um, a 14 year old being expelled with no education options. 
with that as well, the hearing officer would have the opportunity to work with the family to determine maybe it's going to be um, a virtual model with um, touching base with the school counselor at Right Choices. So that type of flexibility is now allowed in here. We were trying, with the exception of really highly eminent danger, threat, weapon, felony of drug distribution. Um, Can I add something, Dr. Straddles? Yes, ma'am. So um, for clarity from the State Department, there are two different levels of expulsion. A kid can be expelled with services, and a kid can be expelled without services. Uh, so okay. our clarity, that's why we put that in this document. So kids who are expelled, especially kids who may have an IEP or 504, our work as a district is to continue to provide services even though they're expelled. So there may be a situation where there is a senior and he's one credit away from graduating, but he needs to be expelled. We recognize that what he or she did results in expulsion. We may continue those services so that he or she can graduate. It may be virtually, it may be at home, but we're gonna continue the services. So we want that flexibility. So I wanted to clarify that there are two ways that we can code our expulsion, either with or without services. Okay. And All just right, to helps. note, and to note that we do have a principal on line with us, and not not by it, it, it is by coincidence. With that practice, it was an opportunity to service children, and that child Correct. did graduate. Correct. And we've had situations where there are seniors, like a credit away from graduating. It is in our best interest as a district to help them get the their diploma so that they can move forward. And keep the school safe. Right. right. And keep the school safe. Right. But it's in the community's best interest to, right. to assist that student, without Correct. a doubt. Correct. Yes, yes ma'am. But I just wanted to clarify that we do expel with or without services. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm, you know, amazed that we we have added that component into the expulsion system, but I I thought we were doing it all on our own, on our own aggressiveness to the state policies. But they do allow that the state policy allow expulsion with services. Yes, I got clear clarity from that while working on the ARs from the State Department. I spoke to Aveen Coleman, who is responsible for alternative programs at the state level, and she did clarify that districts do have the ability to expel. It's still counted as an expulsion on our expulsion record or report, but it's either with or without services. Right. And we choose that not necessarily depending on a student's, you know, IEPs. Right. right? Can, but more, like more on necessity. Right. It can be it can be a kid. Well, I mean it can be either or, but student doesn't necessarily have to have a long baggage of history or a long, you know, record of special services to get that. Right. No, we look at okay. in the you know, that individual students. Right. So um, you know. Well, I guess what I'm getting at is the student got to be in very dire straits not to get it. Yes. Okay. Yes, Mr. Campbell. Um, we're, we're trying as much as possible to keep our schools safe. Yeah. But also not not to take away the chance. Yes. Yeah. Yes. To be very direct with you, sir. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, Dr. Campbell, you get to call in the next reader. <laughs> Since this is an academic committee. Uh, Ms. Swinton, you want to join me, girl? Of course I thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think we are on B. The following guidelines will govern operation. Robin, you know I don't have my glasses on, so. <laughs> Okay. Would you like me to help Do you? This no, no, that's fine. I just, if you keep it still, I can read it. Yeah. Students okay. will receive the core subjects of English, math, social studies, and science. Students will, will receive electives taught in a virtual setting. Instruction will be traditional or in an online setting by certified teachers. <coughs> Number two, students will have specific behavior plan and an individual graduation plan. 
Number three, students will participate in behavior modification, conflict resolution, life skills, and character education programs on a daily basis. Students may be required to perform community service either on the program site or with outside agencies. The Right Choices program shall serve students in grades six through 12. The length of a student's assignment to Right Choices will be determined through the district committee. And again, that's going to be changed to the same verbiage um, that Dr. Campbell and Dr. Stratos shared earlier. Through the student discipline process, and or completion of requirements slash goals set for individual students. The goal is to transition students at the end of the academic reporting periods. <clears throat> Number seven, students assigned to write choices who meet their goals and criteria at the end of their assignment may return to their home school or actually, no, that needs to be taken out. I'm yeah. sorry. The last that's part referencing that. Islands Academy, right? right. Yes. yes. Yeah, right. I saw that in there and that's... Yes. So we'll, we'll make the adjustment to that. So the end of that sentence will say, this, at the end of their assignment may return to their home school and that'll be a period. At that time, a transition meeting must be scheduled and must occur prior to the student's transition to his or, home, or her home school home period. And shall include the student, the student's parent or parent slash guardian and stakeholders from the home school. So the, the references to IA will be removed from number seven. I have a question about number six. Can I ask it? Um, yes, ma'am. The, the last sentence, it just says the goal is tr to transition students at the end of the academic reporting periods. Should we specify transition them to where? Transition them well, to their home school or transition them out of the program? Dr. Stratos. Yeah. Mrs. Robine, just to share, if I had, if there was such a situation on your campus that you didn't want you as a principal, me to return, mm -hmm. and these are going to be far and very few in between, because we do not like to just send children around. Right. We want that opportunity. Yeah. So um, maybe I'm I might be assigned to Mona. Got it. All right, because um, it may have been a situation that I may have went after the principal at a school. So just that little bit of flexibility and again, far and few in between. Um, but maybe, okay, is to so, transition students from? Okay. From Just to indicate that they're leaving the Right Choices program. I don't know, maybe that's just to- um, How about from up? RC to a, a BCSD school setting? Because it could be virtual, right? Program. Uh, so, can we just say the best interest of the student? I don't know. Well, can we just leave it as simple as the goal is to transition students out of RCP right. at the yeah. end of reporting periods? That 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 was my original thought. Just so that we say exactly what transition means—that they're leaving the Right Choices program. That's the goal. So would you state the sentence? I'm, I do apologize, so, so I could write the it out. The sentence will now read, the goal is to transition students out of RCP at the end of academic reporting periods. Yeah. Right. And that way we don't pigeonhole ourselves with regards yes. to where right. they're transitioning to. Right. Robin, can you go to the next page? Before we do, can I just um, ask, so the new verbiage in this AR, um, is that students who are expelled will be allowed to, uh, could be allowed to go to right choices, correct? In lieu of expulsion. In lieu of expulsion. Is there, is there going to, are there any guidelines that might suggest that a student that is expelled um, will complete one academic school year? This is, this is why I'm bringing this up. Um, and um, Ms. Dixon, you, I don't know if you've experienced this, but Sometimes uh, in the past, students have been sent to Right Choices and they've been sent back because it, even without c completing the number of points, um, the, you know, however it was determined at the time. And so my concern is you have a principal or you have teachers that know a child's been expelled. And now all of a sudden they're coming back to the home school in, in, at, at the end of a reporting period. Are there any guidelines that, that would would 
maybe make teachers and administrators a little more comfortable knowing that an expulsion, which is extreme, will not be reversed like within a 45 day reporting period. And Ms. Dixon, could you join in here if you have some thoughts on that? No problem, Ms. Federich. Um, I think what the, the committee did here was that Right Choices program would be the educational setting. That's where the, if that is a choice um, for the student to basically receive services from there. I think if a child is expelled, the child is still expelled and would not return back to the homeschool. I know that if it's a child that has an IEP, it is up to the IEP team, um, along with the LEA, um, the parents, the student, um, the, our coordinator, and then at times we will invite Dr. White into those meetings as well to make sure that we have everything, we're following the correct processes and we're not violating any laws. But I think with, if the committee, um, Dr. Campbell, Ms. Swinton, and Dr. Strettles were correct, I think that the, with the, about the right choices, that could be, you know, where a child, like um, Dr. Campbell said, if a child is expelled with services, that is a placement where that child can receive their services at. Once a child is expelled, that child is will not return back to their home school um, at all. But I think that that's a setting of where they could receive the services. Right. And yeah. I guess my, uh, my go ahead, uh, Mr. Campbell. Yeah, I mean, once you expel. Returning back to your home school is not an option. Right. Your option is, you know, out of school or taking virtual, I guess not virtual or all right choices. You know, you're never going to return back to the home school. Right well, choices are going to finish here. the services that's needed for that particular student. Right. That's the way I understand it. I, you know, mm -hmm. the, the transition part of that sentence there. They're referring to students who are not expelled. Right. That's, so a principal can make a recommendation for expulsion, and there are two different types of expulsion. So you have a 360-day expulsion. So that means the day that you are expelled, you can't return yeah. back to the district or the school district until that day the next year. So that's a 365-day expulsion. And then yeah, there's the remainder of the year expulsion. So whatever you violated, April, you're expelled for the remainder of the year. Mm -hmm. Or you violated in Mar uh, January, you're expelled for the remainder mm -hmm. of the year. And the parent as well as the student has to request to come mm -hmm. back. So they re-enter through um, myself, Miss Swinton, um, July 1 or later is when you can re-enter. So a principal can recommend expulsion and it's up to that hearing officer to either accept that recommendation or a lower sentence. So it could be, I'm not going to expel you, but I'm going to, in lieu of expulsion, I'm going to place you at right choices. Right. Well, you know what? I did not know that, that there was that time associated with expulsion. That helps me tremendously to know that it's a 365 day expulsion or it's an end of the school year expulsion. Correct. And it's specified in our state statute what constitutes a 365 expulsion. Got it. Thank you. That helps me a lot. I appreciate it. Thank you. What, what, Trish, what you're concerned with with that child returning back to the same environment that they got expelled in, right? Uh, well, actually, Mr. Campbell, yes, that was part of it, or returning to any um, school, <laughs> you know, because yeah. word travels. You're like, okay, a kid's expelled, but now he's being sent, you know, at the end of the 45-day marking period to another school. Yeah, yeah, um, no. I, I was just, you know, teachers need to know that, that they... Um, that an expulsion, I mean, that's a serious offense. Expulsion and the, the is child, still defined the same way. I, 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 that's what he's saying. It's still defined the same way as it is defined without any support. Once you're expelled, you're out for the year. Right. Right. And, and I didn't know that it was for a year, though. That was my yeah. misunderstanding or lack of knowledge. Yeah. I didn't know the time associated with an expulsion. So that oh, yeah. clears it up yeah, for that's, me. That's what differentiates mm -hmm. expulsion from other disciplinary action, including more than t 10, 10 days, which we're trying to define that as the limit of right. the regular uh, suspensions. 
Yes, that helps. Thank you. I apologize for diverting. But if, if possible, Mrs. Friedrich, Dr. White's on the line. If, if she could just elaborate on expulsion in relation to students with an IEP so that board members have an understanding with that as well, because there are different limitations that, that fall sure. into that area as well. Um, Dr. White, are you, are you able to, thank you. Um, <laughs> may you speak a little with regard to expulsion? Of, okay. Thank you, the time, the, what, the, what does that look like, conversations that we've had going forward? Right, so students with expulsion, if they violate the student code of, con the code of student conduct, the principal can make any kind of recommendation. If they go to the hearing officer and they're expelled, this is where the difference stop between the student with a disability and a student without. Then even if the student is expelled, the IEP team then meets and determine what is the appropriate setting, which could be right choices at home, virtual, and they have to provide services. Um, usually they also need to be reviewing the progress every 45 days to make sure that they continue to make progress. And when we say with services, it is services to allow that child to continue to make progress in the general education curriculum and or towards graduation. And so then we have to provide services to them and we have to code them in power school as it's spelled with services. With services. With services. If we don't, if it's expelled without services, then we have violated IDEA. So even, but a student with um, disabilities can be expelled, but they must, be, they must still be provided services. Does that make sense? Yes, yes ma'am, thank you. Yeah. Um, just committee me members, I made the corrections on my document that I will share with Wendy on this page for Ms. For Ms. Deborah to make the corrections. Um, Mrs. Swinton, you get to call in another reader. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, I was gonna continue, but that's fine. No, um, no, no, please, continue. <laughs> Thank you. Robin, will you go to the next page, please? Oh, did we have any other questions before we move on to the next page? No, we're good. Okay, thank you. All right, so responsibilities of right choices principal slash staff for a transition meeting. Once a student is assigned to right choices program, a transition meeting must be scheduled within five school days of placement. The principal, school counselor, appropriate school staff, parent, Man ask one thing because we really don't have a principal there. Right. Um, right. I, we're not a school, we're a program. So may we utilize the language director of alternative right. education. Right. I just caught that. And I do apologize, I just caught that myself. We do not have a principal there because right. it opens up a whole other gambit of, of conversation. Yeah. Yes, thank you, thank you, Mr. Campbell. Are, are we good with that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this will be responsibilities of director of alternative programs. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Meeting. All right. So number two will now read director of alternative program, school counselor, appropriate school staff, parent slash guardian, and student must meet to review the student's record and or other documentation forwarded to by the referring school to develop the student's IGP, which is to include a behavior intervention plan if needed. And IGP is for individual graduation plan. Ms. Swinton, so um, is that, uh, since it says school counselor, that means the homeschool counselor, or is there a program counselor? There is a school counselor that works at the alternative program. And I don't know, Dr. Stratos may have input on whether she's, her title is program counselor or whether she's still referred to as a school counselor. We've utilized school counselor for the context of language for um, Jerry Henderson. Okay, so it's not the homeschool counselor. The homeschool counselor doesn't come over for that meeting. They may participate in the, they well, they develop the IGP. They may participate, but this is driven now by the alternative program. Yeah. But, okay. Okay, just, I just wasn't sure when I saw school counselor, I mean, um, I know that when kids are at Right Choices that the homeschool counselor, if on the IEP or uh, 504 or whatever behavior plan has to travel to Right Choices to provide those services. At least that's how it used to be. Um, yep. So I just was wondering that school counselor to be very clear which, which counselor has to be there. 
So if I may, if we look at n number two, director, it would start with the director of alternative education, comma, school principal, comma, and we could say program and homeschool counselor. Would, would that be acceptable? Yeah. I think uh, that if a now, child is, you, you, go ahead, Mr. Campbell. You're adding the school principal back, I mean, also now? Well, it could either be principal or designee. Someone from the school from normally the, is that? From the home school. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Someone Along normally with from the school guidance counselor, maybe, mm -hmm. but, or the program guidance counselor. But they could always zoom in electronically and let, and, versus doing the commutations. Well, yeah, we understand, but I mean, yeah. you definitely because need both both direct, uh, director and the principal. Uh, that's a definite. They've had, I don't know. They have had school representation of the administrative team. Okay. M Mona, Mrs. Dick Dixon, I know you've sat in the transition meetings. Muted. Molly, could you unmute Ms. Dixon, please? I'm, uh, this, I'm new with this one. Molly, Molly got to unmute us. Okay, what was, go, go ahead. Um, when we basically, um, when we meet for the um, meeting, it is actually either a principal or their designee. Um, I myself, I usually attend those meetings, but it's the principal, the designee, we may also send um, the school counselor or our behavior management specialist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a maybe, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, assuming that there'll be a counselor at the meeting of some sort. Yes. Right, Dr. Stratus, that's what you're saying? Y yes, sir, because we need- I mean, that's what the language is going to say. Yes, because in a confirmation of academic needs being met, a school counselor should vet my schedule so that we don't yeah. compromise graduation ability, right? The ability to graduate, yeah. so yes, sir. Yeah. The that is correct, and they do they do minister. they do talk they do yeah. talk with one another the counselor, yeah. um, because they they just got a counselor at the right choices. It has never like had a permanent counselor. Um, when Jerry um, Henderson, when Ms. Henderson got down, she was um, there. But then when she um, moved her position, then they had um, a counselor there. So now they have a steady counselor there, though the counselor at the Right Choices program and the school counselor, homeschool counselor, they do communicate and make sure that the child has the correct courses that they need. Yeah, because I, I'll tell you from experience that uh, the, the, the parent and the classroom teacher are concerned with the communication mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from the homeschool to Right Choices. Yes. And now you're telling me that administrators will have representation both both ends of the administration and both ends of the guidance will have some idea what's going on. You know, I'm, I don't know how many times in, in my years at Hilton AI, I've gone to the guidance and said, what's the story with this kid? I haven't gotten anything from them, you know, da, 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 da. And, and nobody knows. Yes. So that's that's where we don't want that to continue to happen. If if our program going to be, you know, fluid and do the servicing that they're promising these children when they when they go from one place to the next. Plus, all schools want to know who you're sending back when you send that child back. Mm -hmm. and, and I already know because I I got his work already. I oh I got some information from him, but. If you're just sending me back a stranger after 45 days, he's back to square one, or I've gotten worse, then I really want to know that too. And the administrators need to know it first of all. That's that's my point on that. So I I, I you know I agree with the language. So that means that that's got to change quite a bit in terms of saying exactly what you what you wanted to say. So, I would concur, Mr. Campbell, that it needs to really be spelled out and that communication um, really has to be um, strengthened. Um, I know Ms. McKenzie is muted, but... Oh, poor, 
Sorry, Karen. She's not there. Yeah, now she is. Molly, if you could unmute Miss McKenzie as a as a you know classroom teacher and coach and everything that you are, Miss McKenzie, did, would you like to add anything to this? The only thing is, I, I do understand what Mr. Campbell's saying. You know that communication back to the home school and the home teacher is important, and I, I believe that's what um, the team is trying to put in here now is to make sure yes. that happens. Exactly. Excellent. All right, thank you for those changes, Dr. Stratus. I think since this is the AR, and this is where administrators will go to for guidance, that it really needs to be spelled out. Yes, ma'am, that, that's the purpose of our, us meeting. So we'll start that sentence with the language, a director of alternative program, school principal or designee, mm -hmm. school counselor, and I'm putting it in parentheses S. So it could either be the counselor from Right Choices and Homeschool, Okay, and then et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I'll, okay. I'll, that's how the sentence will start. Okay. Okay. So we'll move on to number three. The student will be assigned to classes and school staff will update PowerSchool accordingly. Dr. Stratus. I'm sorry, that's the homeschool staff or the program right. staff who updates exactly. PowerSchool? Yeah, no, it's. I was just about to ask Dr. Stratus, do we need to change that to say the oh. alternative Molly, program? please yeah. unmute Nakia. Nakia wants to say something. I think she's probably better off uh, unmuting everybody and letting them have that. Yeah. That mute button. Thank you. So there is legislation at the state level that alternative programs do not have, are not, um, oh gosh, what is the language? We, we can't, um, we won't own the grades, the attendance, and what was the other one, Kiki? The discipline. Well, the discipline, the discipline will be documented, yeah. but it's okay. still so, be tied to the home school. The yes, home it's school. tied to the home school. So a yeah. program, the, the teacher of record is not at the program. The teacher of record is at the home school. School. So the right. teacher the of facilitator. record is the one who will provide the grades, put the grades in, as well as the attendance that, that has to happen at the home school and there's regs that actually spell that out mm -hmm. so we have to put home school in correct correct it can't be I, right I have, choices because the I, right choice is more like a facilitation of instruction mm -hmm. until they get back to the home school noted uh, and that was really hard for us because of a lot of we had a lot of conversations around it but it specifically says that in the state reg Mm -hmm. that the home school or the home teacher is the uh, responsible party for attendance and grades. Yes. So, so uh, that, that is kind of a tough, that's a tough pill to swallow it for is. a teacher. <laughs> it, is. it is. That was hard for us. We wrestled and wrestled and wrestled and it was black and white. It specifically says home school, home, the teacher of record. Mm -hmm. um, well, well, uh, okay, oh let me ask a question. Uh, for example, all I don't know what one of them uh, do at their school, but I think all the schools have like a data processor for attendance, right, Mona? Yes, you're correct, Mr. Campbell. And by the time you get that information from Ray Choices, I'm sure it probably goes right into to the data processor and, and we get it, if I'm a home a classroom teacher, I might be getting that information backhanded by looking and say, oh, Charles was at Right Choices today. That the way it's done or do I, that homeroom teacher have to put that information in no. first? No. no, no, Mr. Campbell. Um, we get that information from the director of the, of the alternative program by the end of the day. Um, okay. Then our data um, clerk um, places the information into Okay. the system into power school um, mm -hmm. with the attendance. The right. grades, um, we, um, the teachers of record places the grades in and you have different ways that the kids can access um, either through Google Classroom mm -hmm. where they are accessing the assignments and the work that the students are doing 
or one of the things that we have um, done at Well Branch is that I sit down and the teachers, when we discuss and say, what are you doing that we can align with ingenuity? And we place the student on ingenuity so then that the teacher can also access that information. Okay. Uh, that's, that's a lot better than it was five years ago, six years ago. Yes, sir. But, but yeah, but I, I just want, I was want, first of all, I want to be concerned with that tennis. I know the process of grades have mm -hmm. really been upgraded, which you just explained to me, because grades was you get a lump of papers with, from right choices, you know, ungraded in, in an indiscriminate time. That's what it used to be, you know, if you got anything. All right. You're right. Yeah. Mr. Campbell, I could assure you that this year, because that was one of the things I first reviewed with Dr. Campbell, um, the system ha is in place. Uh, yeah, I'm impressed that we're doing it so much different than, than hey, seven years ago. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I think we have made the change to number three and we're moving on to number four. And there will be a change in this when I read ahead a little bit. Based mm -hmm. on these records and any input provided by the student's parent slash guardian concerning the student's needs, BCSD and or program personnel Thank shall you. determine the support mm -hmm. services and intervention strategies recommended for the student. Any questions with regards to number four? No. Okay. Kika, Keek, I have to say thank you for reading this way. It allows me to do the notation. So that's why I had to pan it off. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. No problem. You. I appreciate it. Thank you. Not a problem at all. Removal from Right Choices Program. A student may be removed from the Right Choices Program for the following. Conduct, conduct habitually interfering with another student's right to learn or a teacher's responsibility to teach. If the present presence of the student on campus presents a clear and present danger to the safety of school staff or other students. Thank you, Robin. Failure to comply with the specific conditions of assignment to Right Choices Program or the specific requirements of the student's behavior plan or contract or any other reason by which a student in a regular educational setting may be removed. Okay, so then a student's removed from right choices, what happens? I, I'll be very direct, I put an X through those. I have not been in support of this practice. I mean, so he gets removed and I can tell you sometimes what's happened in the past is they get sent back to their home school. But uh, we're an alternative setting. It is a program. So if we remove a child from a program subject to this, then, then it begs, lends to question, what is the program doing to correct right. the behaviors? Right. I, and I, I'll be very, I have not supported these at all. So, well, go ahead, Mr. Campbell. Well, I mean, a, a number of incidents have happened at our right choices. How, how, what's your limit in terms of tolerance for disruption, fights, and uh, uh, danger at the alternative program. So then, where, it, where do we go from there? Right. But the reality is, and I'm gonna, I have to say this to speak in the purpose of what then is our alternative program doing? Well, I mean, I understand your, you know, you know how I think about that. Okay. That's not the issue. Is how far do we extend this pattern? I mean, eventually there are gonna be a certain percentage of people who are removed from our system of educating. So then we're saying that the program can supersede steps that a school site must take. No. So what, but, yeah. that's, but that's what this is saying. Well, no, the school site might have, well, let's say ex ex expulsion were, was recommended for a child. Uh -huh. We you gave him the may, you may attend right choices. Uh -huh. But he goes to right choices and he does the same thing. And maybe the child then should go back to the hearing committee at that point. Well, I'll and build that in there. That's, that's because to me, 
co conducts habitual interfering with other students' right to learn or teacher's responsibility, that's a level one in our student code of conduct. Here, we're yeah. taking it to a level three consequence. Yeah, and I I'm just that that's some of the just things not, you're saying yeah. there. Yeah. I'm just saying at some point that I don't know how extensive you want to make the issue, but at some point that student repeats level three over and over and over and move from the regular school mm -hmm. then goes to the alternative session and repeats level three again and again. That student is, you know, at a point where we have to look at it again, decide whether a permanent expulsion is necessary or not. I, I don't think I, we can justify the existence of the program for the element that, you know, may be very, very difficult to, to correct in that program. Maybe we send that person to an alternative school somewhere else. But there, but must, there must be a limit of how much we can accommodate. Right. Uh, can I? Because we, our funds won't allow it otherwise. Ms. Robine? Um, yes, I, I think um, that I agree with Mel and I agree with Dr. Stratos. I think we look at number three failure to comply with the specific conditions of assignment to the Right Choices program or the specific requirements of the student's behavior plan or contract will result in. Agree. Okay, so Something. if there's a failure here, now I was the principal of a um, school for excluded students. Mm. Um, and mo uh, it was for excluded students that were behaviorally emotionally handicapped. So they all had IEPs. But let me assure you that when a student brought a weapon to my building, it was a um, secondary building. When they brought a weapon to my building, that was not tolerated just because they had an IEP. And so there was another level that was actually, it was court, you know, it was, it was the legal thing. Um, they, they, there were behavioral contracts for my students that, and my first goal was if they were um, not following their behavioral contract, we had to look at the supports we were giving them, the conditions and, and that kind of stuff. But there was a line, you know, you couldn't uh, <clears throat> let them completely walk over that line and just put everyone else in danger in the school. So I support something like failure to comply with the specific conditions of assignment, or the specific requirements of the student's behavior plan or contract will result in, and then yeah, it's, it's referral to the back to the hearing committee yeah, to decide. Hearing committee again, or whatever. But we have to we have to keep the integrity of that <laughs> of that program in mind. That program is going to be a program in which we try to rechannel individuals. Well, if if individuals begin to get away without being rechanneled, just say, okay, I'm going and I'm gonna stay and I'm gonna do absolutely nothing to improve myself. And the program is kind of productive. The reason we have that program is to, to make changes with the individuals. And for the updates to this um, AR, um, the director of alternative um, placements or alternative programs, um, she does utilize that um, that process. She sent kids who've been assigned to right choices have gone back to the hearing officer. Well, that's 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 what we want. We yeah, absolutely. So I, I, I want to say that that is taking place or took place. Okay. That's, yeah, that's, that's what we we have to have that because uh, it may not happen once in every <laughs> four or five years, but we may have to put a child out of right choices also. And that's the reality of, of the, our process. But now, Mr. Campbell, if it's a 15-year-old kid who's gone through a lot in their life, I could see it if it's a felony, it's a weapon. I've only worked with very challenging children in my career. I, I have to share that. Um, 
I, I'm just looking at that child who's 14, 15, 16 years old. I don't, I, I have issue with taking children like that and just say, well, this didn't work, you, you're out. So I think well, we have to put a system in place to catch and maybe like, as we're saying, go back to the hearing because then I'm turning around, if it's a female, there's probably a high rate of that young lady becoming a young teen parent. They may not complete high school. I, I just, I, I think of all the other things that happen or may happen when we I, I have, don't put I have, other safety I, I, I understand that entirely, doctor. You know I understand that. Yes. But, my, but my, the way this is written, right. I, I written, think it's too, I'll uh, give you an example. Yes, sir. There are, there are other schools outside of Buford County that specify in the people you're talking about. And we have to allow ourselves the, the use of that resource or the leverage to use that resource as a further alternative. So Mr. Campbell, can I add something to that? Just, just as, yeah. so we have places like John De La Howe School, <laughs> Yes. Just like that. But right. those require a judge to court order a child to attend That's what or, have a to get. Has, or a parent has to make a referral. Um, so unfortunately, we don't always have the ability from right choices to direct a student to, let's say, a John De La Howe or, or a school like that. But we do have the ability to maybe pull together a multidisciplinary team that includes the Department of Juvenile Justice, maybe yeah, the office yes. to review. So, right. so what Dr. Stratus is saying is us taking it back to a hearing panel, that hearing panel, now that we have the flexibility to say what that looks like, could include people from those agencies or those departments to be able to work with us to create a plan to support that student. Yeah, so maybe, well, that's what I'm saying too. Yeah. I'm saying yes. absolutely that. Right. I'm not saying yes, sir, kick I just, the I just kid out. Uh, uh, physically, I'm talking about he's extended his limit with our resources. Yes, sir. And we I need to find sure other resources that we can't supply for him or her. And, and I think bringing it back to the committee, the hearing committee with the parents involved, that raises the seriousness of it. Sure. And in the students, level too. I mean, you know, a lot of times these, the, the kids are like, oh, you know, nothing's really going to happen. I'm right. already, so once you kick it back up and say, look, this, you know, these are, are you, you may not be able to stay here. Right. You may be, look, you know, we've got, you know, we're getting these other people involved and, and you may have to go to this other school that's, you know, is that something you want? And, and that can, you know, change the conversation. That can change. So I think taking away number one and two, it just, um, you know, I, I think that if a student is interfering with another kid's right to learn, then that behavior plan should be adjusted to, to work mm -hmm. on that, right? So, right? so that's what I'm saying. The, the main thing there is that the, the behavior plan, you know, if there's continual, um, even after modifications to it, if there's continual disrespect or disregard of the behavior plan, then the next step is we have to convene again. We have to get the, the uh, hearing committee together again. So if we look at Alpha D with more of the language rather than removal, but started with the language non-compliance with right choices program rules and regulations may result with, and maybe list that in that frame. Is that something we could consider? Mm -hmm. That works yeah, for I me. Yeah, I just want you to okay. consider further steps when a child is, I mean, if you don't report to your probation officer over and over and over and the probation officer just lets it go, and that's a flaw in our system, yeah. period. So now we need to say what we, the win is. We have to, we have to teach our children in, in this educational process, the systems process, wherever they might land. We may have some habitual criminals in the school system, but they do still need to negotiate 
the judiciary system in America in a proper way. And that extension, you know, if we let them get away with things over and over and over at that level, without any, at least just a, a, another step that you have to go to, then we, we're doing them a disservice anyhow. As soon as they leave us, they'll be, they'll be in trouble. I'd rather sure. them get in trouble with us. Right. I agree. Mm -hmm. this, this has been great conversation. And so I, I'm, I'm feeling that um, IS-60 needs to be reworked um, and brought back for review. Uh, yes. So um, has Mr. Chon, and I'm sorry, I probably didn't say his name correctly. Or, Chohan. Or Wendy, have they joined us yet? Um, Wendy right. said he's on phone. I do not see Mark. Let me check. Okay, that's fine. I, I was just wondering, since IS-60 needs to be reworked, we have 15 minutes left, mm -hmm. um, 14 minutes left. I was wondering if we should put this one aside and move I to agree. a different one. Um, and then recommend that IS-60 be brought back at a later time because I, I agree with all the conversation here that there needs to be some more accountability and in writing so that it's a guide that people can refer to. Um, Mark is not on and I... Robin? No. Yes. There, there is a phone number there. Yeah, I just didn't know who it was. Yeah. So I didn't yes. unmute them. That is that Wendy? I'm Would going you like to, to unmute it, unmute Molly, them, and ask yes. to identify unmute. themselves? Yes. I am. Uh, can you all hear me? That's Hi, Wendy. Wendy. <laughs> hey, I'm glad to be with you all. I'm, I'm sorry I have to be here via phone and, and not the computer. But I do have printed, I've been trying to write down, and I'll get everybody's notes, and we'll make the revisions. And this has been a very productive conversation, so I want to thank you all. So, Do you want okay. me to put OS 39 up? Or are we doing foreign exchange students with Wendy? Well, it's, we were going it's to whatever at, the committee. Yeah, um, IS 58, yeah. I believe, was Wendy's uh, foreign exchange. Yeah, okay. that's the easy one. Yeah. It's, it's neat, thank you, Mr. Campbell. We need an easy one. We do need that's, an, that's easy, an one. easy one. Yeah, y'all, thank you. I, I mean, that you, that you one. helped us think yeah. of other issues. Yes. Um, just real quickly on the foreign exchange students. I wanted to, if it's all right with everybody, um, add um, a sentence somewhere about that the district um, is not going to be sponsoring foreign exchange students during pandemics, you know, their health emergencies. I think we should put that somewhere in there. There have been a lot of articles about the University of South Carolina and foreign exchange students. So we just, and we had to actually send our foreign exchange students back um, this year when the pandemic started and Dr. Stratus worked on that with me. So Ms. Cartledge, are you suggesting that you're going to add some more things to um, IS58? No, I, I, just, I, I just want you all to look at what's there and the only thing that I think should be added is something to the effect when this was written it was before the pandemic hit and the, the important thing about that revision so for an exchange student are the things that you see that I've added the homeland security and those issues about the visa that we need to make sure we have covered because the one that we had before didn't include any of that. So that language needs to be in that administrative regulation. But because okay, so of this pandemic, yeah, it's just very briefly, I just wanted to mention to the committee, because of the pandemic, we received orders that our exchange students all had to be returned to their home setting. And, um, you know, I just don't know if you all want to address that in the AR, if this is going to be like a temporary kind of situation, or do you want something in there about addressing issues with pandemics, or do you just want to let it be? Well, doesn't the state dictate that we had to do that? I mean, we follow the state laws. I don't know that. Yeah, we had, we had to. Yeah, we had to. We were ordered to do that. Yeah. So, so I just wanted to bring it up because we had to, this one student was from Spain, and um, we thought that she was going to have to be, um, you know, removed from our school, but she was in fact allowed to finish her year virtually. And, you know, Dr. Stratus might be able to give some mm. more input than well, me, but that is something that happened. That's the only thing that's different from the original AR. I just want to get that thing in, in effect, this AR, because it needs to be revised. I mean, so, right. Wendy, do you know what? 
Wendy, do you know what the state requirement for this time and place for foreign exchange students entering into our country for this academic school year? We haven't gotten anything from them. So would that mean that the students may it not may be that we're not having any? We may not I, be have. I have a feeling we're not. Ha I have a feeling we're not having any foreign exchange students for 2020, 21 because of this. We can't. We can't let them in here for their safety and ours. But we're going to need. Could you get us a confirmation regarding that? Because I do. We do have families host trying to host yes. here in Buford for the upcoming academic school year. Um, I need to get that information because there there are two high schools right now that they are on hold waiting to find if the state or anything or federal government is allowing foreign exchange students in. And also whether their countries will allow them to travel, you know, that's on yeah. that, the student to provide documentation that their company has given permission for them to leave their country and come to the United States. So that needs to be obtained as well. But I'll yes. check with the state. Mm -hmm. Thank back, you. Back to, back to Wendy's point, then perhaps we do need to put something in there, not relative to the pandemic, particularly to the pandemic, but to a special situation where we will not allow that exchange from a local standpoint. We do know the, the principals got the, the final check off, right? To say yay yeah, right. or nay. But I mean, just so we don't leave people who are sponsoring and support system so mm -hmm. too far, we can have it in already before we alert them, you know, on the blind side saying we're not doing it. Well, I, it. well yeah. Mr. Campbell, I had a, a parent call me and ask me, and I basically told them that like, during this um, the COVID-19 pandemic, mm -hmm. we will not be accepting um, foreign exchange students at this time due to the fact because of the pandemic. And um, I know that at the fact, like Wendy said, that the statute um, because we had one of our students that had to go back to Japan when it when it did break out. Um, so so we'll have that backup. So she in had to leave after we yeah. closed down in March. She left. Yes, sir. Yeah. I think that would be a good thing yeah, that we have, have something that in there that says so, in so in the standard alone. Right. That decision. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yes, this is what I'd like to recommend. Uh, okay. We really, you know, we have five minutes left. Uh, seven minutes left. I don't think that we could even go through this one, and I hesitate to go through it unless it's complete. Um, so, but you all uh, are okay about adding that information, right? Yes. Um, right, and then uh, once it is added and the wording is is um, added into this AR, then we could um, revisit it again um, in yeah, its well, entirety instead of piecemealing right now. Right. Mm -hmm. And and I want to do that right away because it's an issue that needs to be resolved, especially since we have two high schools that want to have some students. Yeah. But just so you all know, this is Spanish embassy issued an order and that child literally had to be out of the country within, what was it, Dr. Stratus, 72 a, hours, right? It was 72 hours. 72 hours. hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so okay, we so just need confirmation, Wendy, for anything for this academic school year because there are, it is actually a, a large group who sponsor here in Buford. Yep, that's on my to-do list right here. I apologize, I Mrs. Vidra. Eight and seven. That's fine. Okay. Uh, no. This again, we started the meeting out saying that we had to be fluid, flexible, and informed. And mm -hmm. so that's what uh, that's what's happening right now. So mm -hmm. I would like to recommend um, that we add um, IS58 due to the urgency of it to Tuesday's meeting. So Tuesday, we would focus specifically on SS39 and IS58. Yep. Kathy and Mel, what do you think of that? If Sounds good. And I, do 60. It, I don't mind it. And then Ms. Fidder, to IS60 revisions too, we could get those finished. Hopefully. Yeah. Oh. Right. Uh, no. Uh, 60 is going to be a one. lot. That's a, it's a long one. Yeah, I, I'm feeling that's going to take uh, Dr. Stratus, you and your team meeting and really um, committing to paper the the yep. everything that we just discussed. Yes, so ma'am. So we're meeting at nine o'clock on Tuesday, um, and at this time, SS39 and IS58 or it would be on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
So it's a nine o'clock Tuesday? Yes, it yes. is. Yes. Okay. Nine till 11. Okay. So the agenda Tuesday will just be AR and to go ahead and publish IS-58 and SS-39 or just say alternative regulation, uh, uh, um, administrative regulations. Dr. Stratos, are you thinking that those will be the only two that we will be able to complete in a two hour period? Yes, mm -hmm. ma'am, I, I, I believe so. Okay, then let's go with that guidance, um, Robin, and say okay. SS-39 and IS-58. Okay, from nine, from 9 to 11 on Tuesday. Correct. Yes. All right, we'll see if okay. county can, we'll see if county can cover it. If not, we'll have to do what we did today. Okay, very good. Um, right. Ms. Robine and Mr. Campbell, I don't know that we really need a motion coming out of this for SS25 and IS33. Why don't we just lump it all together on Tuesday? Okay. No, yeah, I, you know. Agree? Yeah. I agree. Okay, great. All right. Um, any other comments from anybody? Okay, so motion to adjourn. So move. I yes, second it. Thank you, Ms. Dixon. <laughs> Mel, did you make it? And I'll second it. <laughs> no, somebody else made it, so I, I'll be quiet. That was Miss Dixon. She's not allowed to do that. <laughs> she can't do that. Okay, I move we adjourn. I'll second. You are I don't think you need a second for adjournment, though. I know. I, know. Yeah. I don't know. All right, everybody, uh, have a good weekend. And uh, we'll see. Thank you. Thank you. See you next week. Bye. 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 Bye.